We would think he was throwing away egg cartons, but he was actually stashing them in his closet, <laughs> as well as milk jugs and everything else. And one day he came downstairs, I think he was about 12 or 13, and he had made a robot. I don't know how long it took him, but it is the funniest thing. When Dr. Rolanda Schmidt talks about her children, her energy seems to take on a life of its own. I would say eight months maybe. He, he had blue eyes when he was born for two years and then they changed to green. Much of her life is now spent talking about her youngest son, Giovanni. So there's Gino with my oldest, Gino with Roger's daughter when they were younger. Giovanni, 18 years old, was intelligent, wise, and living with autism. And Dr. Rowe, as many referred to her, says Gino was always pulling pranks and pushing buttons. I remember him getting his license and it took him a while, probably five times because of the high functioning autism that he lived with. But the fifth time he came home, the driver dropped him off and he said, mom, I didn't make it. And I said, well, it's okay, Gino, you know, we'll get it next time. He goes, I'm kidding, you know? So I was like, I, I, I just remember those times of him laughing. Getting his driver's license meant more than just a teenage rite of passage or a sense of freedom it would eventually come to mean life for as many as 70 people. I went to go look for him, and I can speak to you calmly right now because I've been through trauma therapy for a year, but I went to find him and um, he was hiding behind a door, bald over, like curled up, and he was crying like I had never seen him cry before. And I said, Gino, what is wrong? And I, I rubbed his back and I told him that I loved him. And he, uh, he said, who's on the phone, mom? Those were his last words to me. Dr. Rowe on the phone with Giovanni's school says she walked away from him to answer the door. The school had sent police to their home after his friends told school officials about text messages he'd sent saying he was planning to take his own life. Just moments later, she heard a loud bang. I don't know if they pulled Giovanni up, but I could hear his last three breaths and that's just all I remember. And I'm like, it, it, I, it must have dawned on me. I said, Gino, you know, and I'm calling out his name. And uh, yeah, it's just something you'll never, ever, ever forget. The police wouldn't let her back into the house and she and her husband drove to the hospital, hearing almost immediately from the doctor that Giovanni wasn't going to survive. I um, held his hand and it was just cold as ice. Um, yeah. It was cold as ice. I was just like, wow. Like it's, it's a feeling that as a parent, it's just something that you never want to go through. And it's, it's, it, it will haunt me, you know, forever because I knew he was gone. Soon after, a nurse told her a representative from LifeSource, an organ procurement organization, was there to speak with them about Giovanni's organ donation. I looked at my husband and I'm like, you're going to have to talk to them because I feel like I can't even breathe. And, um, the nicest person came. They made it like such a, a beautiful process to tell us what, what would happen at that moment. Dr. Rowe's attorney had been on the waiting list for a kidney for almost four years, and it was the first person they thought of when talking about his donation. It turned out he was a match. How does that happen? So we've asked him for a bill since, and he won't send us a bill. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, so Gino gave life, and wiped out our attorney bill, I guess. A 20-year-old received Giovanni's heart, someone his liver and skin, and another his eyes. She's written to the recipients through LifeSource and waits and wonders if she'll hear from them, for it's up to the recipient whether or not to respond. Whoever has these eyes, I want to see them someday. So, you know, I'm sure that they're just as handsome on them as they were on him, so, or, or she. Everywhere you look, there are reminders of Giovanni on walls around every corner. And there's G again. He's just, um, yeah, it's, the memories will never leave. And even on furniture, his dog Roman waits and wonders if his person will return. I think he can still smell him, I do. I don't know how, but he wore this thing like almost every day once he, or with the autism spectrum, I think of it, creature of habit. Dr. Rowe's pain is raw and she questions herself daily, wondering if there was more she could have done to save her son. Some days I blame myself, like, was I a good mom? What, what could I have done, you know, just all of those things go through your head. Part of her journey is sharing her story through motivational speaking in her podcast, uncovering truth with grace, relying on her faith and knowledge 
that through his death, Giovanni has given the gift of life to many, and she hopes someday she'll get to meet those who now live through him. I'd like to know because he saved lives, and um, I, I just want to know how he lives on and who he lives on in.